so stoked to have my boy on here, Mr. Mark Smith, 72 Investor. If you guys have not yet checked out his social profiles, his podcast, I'm not just saying it because I was a guest on it, but this man has some amazing guests. I actually saw a story of uh, his today on, I'm not sure if it was on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, but you're all over the place, so it's you're not that hard to find, um, and, you're, and, and you're starting to beat me because I usually say to people, I'm not that hard to find, but I saw a cool story of yours with uh, uh, your lineup of guests that you have coming up and so i'm actually very excited to hear and see some of those conversations but mark how you doing brother i'm doing amazing man this is uh yeah surreal to be here man i remember being in the epic studio probably about oh man that was like pre-covid <laughs> wow why do i feel like that was like even going back to mid 2019 or something maybe even early it's all such a blur eh? i know man i think it was about uh, i think it was like late 2019 i think yeah you came in and uh you took the drive over and you saw the place and that's kind of when we were starting to get to know each other yeah um and then and then i did more even of a digital deep dive as i like to call it on you and i came to realize like i mean you're up to a lot of stuff man really cool story um a I, again going back to the stuff that you're up to i mean you produce a lot of content but what i really like about what you're up to marky is that you're a real estate investor man and and now you're coaching people on it um and don't let me you know put words in your mouth um i'm not sure like if you're formally coaching people or not but i know you just talk about it a lot and you put out that content but you actually do it yourself you know mm -hmm. you're not that um 21 year old life coach that um or 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 you know massive pet peeve of mine somebody who's a sales coach who's never sold anything right yeah. um and i'm not trying to dog people i just i just like just, i would rather you just stay in your lane right like stay in with what you know but you yourself are an investor um as i was I, as i quickly kind of mentioned to you off air i'm gonna say about 50 to 60 percent of my viewers and listeners are are hungry for real estate knowledge and and really thirsty for for tips and strategies especially in today's market and then the other 40 to 50 percent of my viewers and listeners are truly just looking for 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 tactics on how to grow their business to kind of better their life right just to find maybe it's more happiness um um, maybe it's just just to come to come to a place where they know they're going to hear a lot of positivity. And so um, I try to put out that virus, as I like to call it more and more as I uh, as I grow as a content creator. But I'm just so like happy to watch how much you're doing it as well and your growth. So, you know, kudos and congratulations to you, brother. Well, I appreciate that. But you know what? Uh, what I love about our community, because there's a very limited pool. I'll call us the freaks yourself myself that you know there's andrew hines for example there's matt mckeever um i mean although i'm putting my name in this in the same sentence i really am in the shadows of these amazing greats uh, but there's only a handful of us that actually take time out of our day to do what we do we invest heavily with time with money just to create something and, and showcase it with the world um, and so, and I love what you said about the whole, and I'm good with dogging people, man. I, I, I let's call it out, man. I, I'm all about that, man. Nothing infuriates me more when people say they're a real estate coach or they're a mentor. Um, but one is, uh, they're probably not doing it or they haven't done it in a long time. Or two is they don't even have a mentor or coach themselves in this marketplace. You can, you can have a dog missing three feet and I and be deaf, make money in this market. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So I'm always pushing on people and I'm actually working on lifting the veil off people and saying, Hey, there's people out there that are losing money because they're not being equipped and they're surrounding yourself with the wrong people that are out there just to make money off of them. I, I don't stand for that. Well, I love that. The, the, the fact that you use the word mentors. I mean, for me, I go back to, um, obviously having two older brothers, um, were officially mentors, but they definitely the were the ones who um, kept me grounded, still keep me grounded, uh, kept me out of trouble, um, 
and and it was it, it it's always been a healthy reminder having two older brothers that are closer to the bottom than I am to the top, right? I mean, no matter what, um, uh, it's what success I've I've encountered and all that. I mean, at the end of the day, those two guys, um, along with my father, but my father was always busy, man. He was a taxi driver, mother being a factory worker, her whole life. I mean, they. Um, they, they weren't around, and I'm not sitting here saying, oh, my God, I totally understood it even back then, and even more so now, how much they had to put themselves through. Uh, but then as I went into my professional career, it started for me, really, um, with my mentor in car sales, who, who owned and still owns, I don't know, eight, nine of the top car dealerships, auto dealerships in, in, in Ontario and Canada. And he took me under his wing, kind of took me in as a son, really. And that's when I started to realize, like, Oh, I don't, I don't think I even called it mentorship or having a mentor. It was just like, this is awesome. I'm, like, I'm getting to learn from the top guy in the business, like in the industry and then in real estate. I got into real estate and and uh, uh, a gentleman, he, he's passed now, but he took me under his wing, was in the business at that time for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, he also was an investor, but I mean, he really taught me the 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 right way to grow a, a real estate sales business right and sure. i became partner took me under his wing i want like who were some of your early mentors sure. and 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 then now at the time of this recording mid 2021 who are who are some mentors that you look to now and then you know not to throw so much at you um and i try not to do this but my viewers and listeners i'll sometimes ask three questions in one i try not to do that um a who are some of your early mentors b who are some of your mentors now but really see like why has mentorship been so important in your life because I hear you talk about it a lot, brother. Absolutely. So, um, so mentorship. Yeah. So, I mean, before I even get to that, I think there's, uh, you know, there's people ask me a question. What's the difference between a coach and a mentor? A coach really helps you find who you are. Um, a coach, like, you know, I look at some hockey coaches, for example, they never played hockey in their life. They've never played professional hockey, but yet they are elite coaches. Okay. So they help find that within. I find the mentor helps you find who you're looking to become. Okay. So a mentor really activates They're almost like a potentiometer. They almost just push these little buttons and they just let you go. But at the same time, they hold you accountable at the same time. And I'm a firm believer of mentorship because met, like the, the only ROI you have control over is the investment you put into yourself. And a lot of people are always like, Oh, I, I, I just want to buy my first property. I just want to buy this. And, it's amazing how many people will actually put uh, buy a television, put it on a credit card, but they will not invest in themselves and put that on credit card as an example. For me, mentorship is about compression of time. Time is, is a finite resource. Everything else is abundant. There's an abundance of deals. There's abundance of properties. There's abundance of JV partners. There's abundance of money. What we don't have an abundance of is time. So we need to, we need to compress that time. And for me, I, you know, although I'm a real estate investor as one of my vehicles today, and I call it a vehicle is because I actually changed, you know, my branding, it was called the seven two real estate investor. And last year I actually changed it to the seven two mindset investor because I realized it was a shift in my mindset that allowed me to be successful in real estate investing. So I made a, pro a proclamation out there uh, publicly and I'll say it again. I made a proclamation that I will be spending $1 million on my personal development and my mindset because that is the only ROI I have control over. To date, I've already spent $225,000 on this. This is why all the stuff at social media, people are seeing the guests I have, um, being in a room like this with yourself, um, you know, uh, this afternoon, and I'm not sure when this is going to be aired, but this afternoon, I'm doing a live with Tim Story, who's a friend of mine who's a personal friend with Oprah Winfrey. And you know, it, you get in these rooms and the answers are out there. So you can either try to figure out how to figure them out and die doing so losing time, or you could just pay for them. Well, I love that, man. There's so much to unpack there. Let me go back a little bit. Um, something that you first, something that you said that really resonated with me. And we're definitely going to talk about the million dollars uh, that, that you're going to be spending and the 225 that you spent because I think that, like, that's the first time I heard it and so I just maybe missed it when you were putting it out to the world um, recently but I definitely want to dive into that when you spoke about the difference between a coach 
and a mentor. I mean, that's probably the first time that I've seen it described um, and compared, and you are you articulated that so well. Um, were, were, were you at one point like with coaches and then decided, okay, I'm going to get to mentors now? Like, what did you, did you have to make a mindset shift at some point? Like, where did you come up with that? Absolutely. Um, and, and, and I'm going to say this uh, very carefully because I know there's a lot of people out there are concerned to be coaches and so forth. In my experience, I find there was people that were coaches, but they would just tell you what you wanted to hear. A mentor is going to tell you what you don't want to hear, but you have to hear it. And that's the difference. So if one has to grow, one has to become uncomfortable. And I, I lived, I was blessed. I mean, I've done high ticket sales. I've done over a hundred million dollars in high ticket sales. I've done this in my previous life and continue to do so. Sorry, but man, nothing is more suffocating than being the smartest person in a room. It's suffocating. I think some people love to hear themselves talk. So they love being in front of a room of, but they're the smartest person in the room. You're not growing as far as I'm concerned. So I take pride when I go to a room and I'm like, Oh wow! Like I need to level up. Well, I you know, I, I I love that you said it because I always think of Jimmy Johnson, uh, coach of the Dallas Cowboys back in the early '90s, and he always used to say the way that he got the '92 and '93 team to win back-to-back Super Bowls very tough to do was he always put people in places of where he actually envisioned them to be, not where they currently were. Right. And so if he saw uh, maybe a bench player, someone that who was always a bench player, but he envisioned them as a starter, he would let them start some games because he wanted them to get the taste and the feel for it. And so I uh, totally understand that in terms of, of, of also not being wanting to be the smartest person in the room, because I totally agree with you, by the way, you, you want to grow if you want to grow anyways, and some people don't. So this episode or, or, or this conversation might not be for you. I mean, we're definitely going to be talking about growing, but I got to go back to this million dollars that you want to spend on personal growth. I love great, great proclamation. I love it. You said you spent about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Where'd you come up with that number? Like, is that is that workshops you've taken? Like, where where did all that? Like, where did you actually come up with that number? That that's where you are now. And then, where do you see the next seven hundred and fifty grand or all or so being spent on? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's a combination of different mentorship masterminds I've been part of. Um, so uh, I mean, some of you've actually had them as guests. So I have had uh, Corey McKinnon. Uh, he was actually my first investment as as a performance uh, mentor. Um, great still a, a, a great great friend of mine um, to date. Uh, and then of course uh, Matt McKeever, uh, who we've also had on your show. I've had uh, Ben uh, Humble on. Uh, ben Humble was another one. And then from there, I had other mentors that I was paying to play for type of thing with either health as well. And then from there, uh, now of course, uh, trying to think of other workshops I've taken. And then I've done, I've had Tim Story is is one of my mentors. And it's interesting, Tim Story is not only a, a helping me with my personal stuff, but he's also mentoring me at the same time. Um, and then, you know, going down this journey from real estate to now um, looking at businesses. So I've uh, now have Judge, Judge Graham, who took his company public in the States, um, and Matt Monero, who has a, uh, the biggest privately held commercial leasing company for trucks in the US. I think he's doing about 250 or 275 million dollars a year um and they're just all about removing the sizzle and focusing on a stake so it's all process driven and getting your business fundamentals going um i was just on a call yesterday with someone mastering my craft of uh neuro linguistic programming uh because i believe that's an asset for me with what i do with, with the way i communicate so it's just about continuously to dig that well is what i'm doing yeah when you said um the best investment is in yourself. Look, we both are real estate people. Um, we both love it as a vehicle. It is, um, and I'm biased, obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm a real estate broker, right? And so I get paid when people invest into real estate. Let me peel back the curtains and tell yep. you and if you're new to our world. Um, but I still, like, I truly, truly believe real estate investing is one of the best type of investments however investing in yourself will give you the biggest returns because you can control majority of the output and not all the circumstances but definitely a lot of the output i believe in and when you were talking about that it just made me think i mean the first mic for my podcast that i bought was about a i think it was about 
$50 mic from Staples. And mm -hmm. it was great because it like got us started. Huge sign above my head here says ready, fire, aim, um, which for me is just a reminder for my team is just a reminder. Start pulling the trigger. We'll adjust along the way. We'll aim. It does say aim, but we'll do that along the way. And so that $50 mic got us started. Probably episode, I mean, I think we're now, I think, and you will be out uh, right away tomorrow. Um, and, and I think that's episode like 171 or 172. But I think around episode 30, 35 is when I started to get the $200 mics. And instead of one mic, I bought four mics because I envisioned myself having three guests sometimes live here in the studio. Mm -hmm. We picked up a little better lighting. We picked up a little better uh, uh, cameras. And, and, and then we got all these other tech things for audio and stuff like that. I, I bring this up because once we started to invest in ourselves, and I personally put that money in, I, when I started to put that money into myself, I started to get bigger guests. I started to ha do more content and yeah. that all happened because I made the investment into myself. So again, I mean, we truly are and the viewers and the listeners are going to get to catch on really quick. I mean, Mark and I are really cut from the same cloth in so many aspects and there's probably a little bromance going on. And so you guys Absolutely. are definitely going to hear a lot of similarities. Um, but I want to go back to 7-2, the, 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 the the branding of 72 now it is 72 mindset investor but the story behind it is something that i always like hearing my viewers and listeners need to hear it. i am a poker player not professionally by any means but i love the game of poker i do do sometimes I don't know what the word is. Get uh, uh, maybe it's some liquid courage that I get when play with that hand seven two. For some reason, I get roped in thinking I should play with it. But I know yours has a little different meaning. Talk about where the seven two uh, branding came from, brother. Absolutely. No, I, I'd love to. <clears throat> so, what is the seven two? As you mentioned, seven two is it? I mean, if you, when someone plays poker. And you get a seven two and maybe for one of these that have liquid courage you want to play poker if you get a seven card and you get a two card you want to fold that hand because the likelihood of winning on the hand is very unlikely and it's considered to be the ultimate bluff um but if you're playing safe you want to fold that hand um and throughout my life i would be played bad hands and i'd fold that hand kept on folding the hand kept on folding the hand i hit rock bottom and it was a point where it was a choice, the power of choice. I can either play this bad hand or I can fold it and I go jump off a bridge. Basically, that's what it's going to come down to. And I said, screw this. I'm playing this bad hand. And what I did was by playing that bad hand, uh, you know, it changed the trajectory of my life. And, and what, what the significance of the 7-2 comes in from is in life, you can't control the hand that you're dealt but you can control how you play that hand. That's what it comes down to folks in, in anything in life. I mean, that's the beauty we're blessed. And we have the power of choice. It is not the circumstance that defines you. It's how you choose to respond to that circumstance. And that's what the seven, two means for me. So my self signaling is always a seven, two. I mean, I got three hats coming your, your guys' way for Simon, yourself and Laura. And like the hat is seven two. Oh, you're awesome. The, the the license plate on my Porsche says seven two. My business card, it's a my business card. I'll pull it off here. Um, it's a playing card, and you turn it around it says seven two. Everything around that is my self signaling, and it's really to empower others. Is that hey, you can make a choice here, and you know life's biggest risk is not taking one. No. Yeah someone's listening someone's watching um and currently they've been dealt the seven two hand yeah uh, let's walk them through it what's the what's the first thing you're going to advise them to do to start to possibly move the remo remove the friction of that that negative hand that they've been dealt to more of a positive vibration as i like to call it sure. what would what would be some things that they could do like that first thing and then that second thing i don't want to try to layer on too much because i think we as just humans get overwhelmed right and and yeah. and i always like to say not that i'm into eating elephants but if i was it'd be one bite at a time or sure. or you, you know you can't drink water from a fire hydrant right so those one or two next steps marky like what do you think that somebody should be doing if they're right now they've been dealt 
a seven two hand and and, and and that can you know come from any aspect of life business uh their personal life their professional life uh, maybe a real estate deal went bad or whatever it is what's those one or two things man like sure. next steps yeah so next step so i think what i can tell people i think it's not when you're in that in that position i think it's what you do before that it's mental conditioning um you know it's it's amazing how like let's get big takes us to real estate i've seen many real estate investors lose money and make really bad decisions and the, many of these investors will walk away from a property because it has a foundation crack yet they got the very foundation crack that's actually bigger and gaping and it's between their ears so what i find for individuals is you need to have that mental conditioning if you invest in yourself in that mindset piece you can take on any challenges and let's face it, uh, because I focus so much on my mindset and invested so much in my mindset, I can take on more problems. Not that I want to, but I'm able to be more conditioned. So it's about mental prepare, mental preparation. So what I tell people is that if they don't have that mental preparation, so let's just say someone buys a property and they went and it's because it's a crazy market and they said, you know what, I'm just going to buy this and I'm going to go firm without an inspection and do my due diligence. Okay, so you buy it because someone said it's a good deal. Now you find out this thing is completely laced with, with asbestos and it's uh, and what are you going to do about it? Well, there's two things you can do about it. You can either be a victim and you can blame others or you can take ownership. Ownership is when you play that bad hand. That's where the responsibility comes. You take responsibility saying, okay, this is my fault. I bought this property without doing my due diligence. Now, what am I going to do about it? Okay, well, I can now look at my different exit strategies. One, okay, it's going to cost me this much money to do this. You know, and, and folks, what's the worst thing that has to happen? You can go back and sell this property. You may have bought this property for $500,000. You may have to now sell it at $450,000. $50,000 hit. You're not, you're not going to go BK on that. Like it, you shouldn't. And if you are, you should have gotten into real estate investing in the first place. Yeah, it's so, so true, right? I mean, some right. people get in, get in without, I mean, you mentioned about not even doing your due diligence and the due diligence that you specifically spoke about when it comes to investing in real estate Absolutely. is, um, is, is, uh, uh, you know, not doing your, uh, checking up on your financing, doing a home inspection, all of that important stuff. Look, just because you don't put it into the offer, and we're kind of going off on a tangent, but I love it. That's just what you and I are going to do. Yeah. Um, like, just because you don't put it into your offer doesn't mean that you can't do it before. Like, you can do all these things, uh, i.e., get your financing check, do the home inspection, get the lawyer involved, yeah. and then you can consider going firm and binding on a contract. But, yes, obviously, um, when shit hits the fan – what you're talking about when you said how are you gonna respond to it i always think of um a, a formula that i read in the success principles by jack canfield probably my top three books i mean it's not a it's not as uh, 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 elaborate as maybe a seven habits of highly effective people, which is also on my top three list. But I just love the layman's terms that uh, the success principles is written 68 or 67 uh, success principles that Jack Canfield speaks about. And one of the first one, the first principle is is the formula E plus R equals O, which is an event happens. Your response to it will determine the outcome. Right. And so mm -hmm. what you're talking about, Mark, I mean, it resonates with me so much, brother, because when shit will hit the fan and to think anything otherwise, I think, is being naive that you're not going to come up with obstacles. I mean, there's no one who's had success, including myself and including Mark here, that hasn't come up with come up to hundreds of obstacles and all the people that we got mentored by and coached by. I mean, I mean, same thing. It's just the fact that they kept on getting back up again. I mean, isn't it just that, man, the resiliency, Mark, that the amount of people, the amount of times you mentioned the, the Matt McKeevers and the Ben Humbles and, and you know, one of my favorite people in the world, I just don't talk to him often, is Andrew Hines. Um, but I really, really love that guy. Um, Corey McKinnon as well. All these mutual friends that we have. I mean, they just got hit just like us, but they got back up again, right? I mean, it's that it's that resiliency that's going to get you to the next stage. Absolutely. And that's what it comes down to. That's why I tell people, like, we let, let, like even looking at 2020, 
people went into 2020. People were hyped in 2019. 2020, this is the year it's going to change me. It's the year of vision. It was the year of vision. It was the year of vision. The whole world got hit with World War III with an enemy that we've never seen before. The whole world. And you can come out of 2020 saying you were a victim of COVID, or you can say you were a victor of COVID. And okay. that's the way I look at it. Like 20, like, and sadly, yeah, a lot of people lost their lives. I get it. And it was, it's horrible. But what did you do about it? I mean, people were complaining before COVID that they weren't enough home enough. They were working all the time. They didn't have time with their families. You have a bad hand now. What are you going to do about it? You're going to complain. That's and so, so I look at my, like, I look at what I've done that bulk of that those funds i invested i invested in myself during 2020 because i'm not going to sit here and be a victim well you you decided that you're going to take charge right i love that right mm -hmm. i mean i I'm, you said 2020 and i'm reminded of once um that just literally outside this office and there's a tv outside this office and we were watching um the prime minister talk and and he decided that we're going to go into this lockdown me being jazz i said to the team i was like that right, guys don't worry, everyone take a two week holiday. We'll be back. And obviously it didn't last only two weeks, <laughs> but after that first two weeks, it was time to really, um, for lack of a better word, get that reality check where I started to sit down with, you know, the Laura's and the Seamoses around me and say, okay, <clears throat> we have some tools. We have some tools, not in the toolbox in the shed, but the tools and the toolbox in here, which is we've all personally been through something in our lives one, you know, one thing that we all collectively went through was the passing of a partner um, and a very important person in all three of our lives. But also personally, Laura, you got your own story. Seamus, you got your own story. Jazz, I have my own story that this is not going to define us. This lockdown and the certain and, and, and the current circumstances of not even knowing what the heck's going to happen with real estate values. Are we going to be essential? We're not essential and all that kind of stuff. And we have, you know, we have an organization of 47 real estate agents. Um, and at that time, I think we were probably at about 32, 33. Um, and we had like seven support staff. We decided. We decided, which means that we cut off all other options. I mean, the word decide, the root of the word decide means to cut off all other options. It comes from pretty negative words like homicide, suicide, and genocide. But at the end of the day, we decided that we're going to cut off every other option and we're not going to let go of anyone. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to grow. How are we going to do it? We have no clue. But we decided it was getting clear on exactly what we wanted our outcome to be and why we wanted it. We wanted it because we decided that it's not going to be the it's not going to be our story. That's not going to be our story that we failed and how we let the universe take care of that. And we just started to get in front of the opportunities. Right. I mean, they're all you, 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 you mentioned it earlier. I mean, there's an abundance of money. There's an abundance of JVs possible JV partners. There's an abundance of business opportunities, I, I, I'm investing opportunities. It's a matter of the person who gets in front of it. And I mean, I would love your take on this, like, and, and maybe you can even use an example in your life. Like, I put up a post today on Instagram that said, look, if it, it's very easy to spot a red car when you're always thinking about a red car. It's very easy to think of business, uh, get in front of business opportunities when you're always thinking of to get in front of business opportunities. It's also very easy to get mad when you're looking for reasons to be angry, right? And so be very careful with the thoughts that you put out there because your thoughts become your feelings and your feelings become your actions. And I would just love to get your take on all that. Sure, I, I love that. So there's that old saying, you are what you eat, you are what you think. That's what I tell people, you are what you think. And so, you know, as you're giving those examples, um, same thing, you know, uh, it, it's all like, again, I, you know, as much as this is all about, you know, the, the theme is real estate. It's all up in our head. Well, it's in fact, it's so sorry, Mark, not to cut you off. I mean, you said the theme is real estate. We haven't even talked about real estate. That's once true. Yet. That's true. Right? Because we <laughs> but, know, um, right? 80% of it is here and you're going to so, continue, brother. Yeah. So what I tell people is that, you know, if, if and, and for those that are either listening to this or may watch this, just here's an exercise for you. Just put your hands on your ears. And what I want you to do is move your hands in front of you. Look at that distance. That distance is the space between you and you achieving your goals. If it's you want to become a billionaire, that is the space. It's all up in your head. It's all up in your head. So you have to be intentional with it as well. 
I think a lot of people, actually, I, I do know a lot of people live in scarcity. They're too scared to tell people how they really feel and what they want to strive to become because they're worried about judgment. Screw them. Well, look, brother, I love that you said scarcity, right? Um, and I've been asking a lot of people this question. Um, I don't know if it's a DNA thing. Again, just want your take on it. I don't think you and I have ever spoken about this. I don't know if it's DNA. I mean, for me, um, maybe it's because I had two older brothers. Um, I just never, you know, I was never the kid. Like, I, I, I and, and, and I've asked my parents this, like, when other kids came over, was it about the toys that I did? I try to hoard them away. Did I keep them away? Like even now in business, I mean, I all the real estate agents in our country, um, whoever is listening, they know that I'm like giving the way all the tips, all the, like, I gotta. I'm not a coach. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just I don't I don't have the time for it. Um, but I'm just giving away all the tips because I want to give back to the industry. How does one go from scarcity? to abundance one might understand so they, they 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 hear you they hear i mean i say the pie's big enough and if we run out of pies we'll go bake some more like you're you're screaming this from the rooftops i'm screaming it thousands of others are screaming it generally people who have accomplished and understood success it only comes from again my opinion from when you help other people the, the, if you want to get wealthy help as many people as you possibly can get what they want you'll have more wealth than you've ever dreamt of we understand it people listening they're like okay dude i get it but fuck every time somebody else gets something around me i get this weird feeling and i'm jealous and i'm comparing and so how do i go from scarcity to abundance yeah um, so first things first, you know, um, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm just going to call it out cause that's what I do. Um, I feel like I'm the police today. Uh, a lot of imposters out there, they'll read a book and saying, oh yeah, abundance, abundance, abundance. And as soon as you just know, and it's like, come on, dude, like, seriously, you're so scarce. It's not even funny. Right. Um, and so you see that around everywhere, but the first thing that we have to do, and I think the you know, first thing we say is in our gen genetics is in our DNA that we come from scarcity. No, it's environment. See, there's a, po a Persian proverb that says, if a plant doesn't grow in its environment, you don't change the plant. You take that plant and move it to a different environment. Environment, like I say environment. When I say environment, family and friends, number one. Family and friends are the number one dream killers in this universe. Dream killers. Now, I love my family. Don't get me wrong. But it's just the way they think because that's how their thinking is because they're a reflection of their own environments they're in. Okay, so it's a compound effect. So one is changing your environments. Friends and family is one of them. The rooms you're in, get into the small, I say more friends, more problems. Get into a room of allies. Get people that are going to call out your BS. Friends will say, hey, you've been working at the gym all week for five days. You know, you haven't had a beer for the whole week. Come on, it's Saturday. Come on, man. Do your favorite friends. Come on, man. When are we going to see you again? A mentor is going to say, hell no. Hell no. I'm going to come and work out with you. and We're going to make sure we don't have a beer together. So allies, accountability. So I think, uh, I think there's also uh, environment is the music we listen to. I mean, I, I joke with the kids. They're listening to, I, I, I call them juice box and bum smoke. I don't know their names anymore. But and half these guys are dead because they either got killed in prison or they tried to hide drugs by swallowing drugs and going through an airport. Those aren't the role models. That, what kind of environment is that? So for me, it's all about the music, not music, the, I listen to a lot of uh, audiobook. I'm reading the podcast, connecting with individuals like yourself, Laura, Simeon. That's where the abundance is. And it's the inception of ideas. And then you have to cultivate. you got to work your land, as Tim Story says. Cultivate it, nurture it, and let it grow. And I think a lot of people are so focused on, um, they talk about their upbringing and, uh, you know, they didn't have a lot of money or parents were working multiple jobs and so forth. And they say they want to break the curse. Breaking the curse is not monetary. Breaking the curse is the change of environment. It's becoming an abundant mindset that destroys the curse for your next generations. Now, look, I mean, I, I when you even spoke about family and friends, something I talk about, I don't think you're saying just because I know you. Um, that you're saying cut your family and friends out, but maybe cut some of the time that you spend with them, right? Like, I mean, if you're on the phone 
with yeah. and if that person just happens to be mommy or daddy and you're on the phone with them for an hour a day but they're the ones who bring in the negativity maybe consider only spending 55 minutes with them not say yep. cut them out right get back five minutes of your life so now that's 35 minutes at the end of the week that you just got back to then pour into yourself some of the resources that Mark spoke about, the podcast, the audio books, you want to read, read, you want to watch some YouTube videos, go watch YouTube videos, something that where you're going to have more positivity come in, this way more positivity comes out. I mean, there's a, a shirt that I wear now every day, it's called Jazz Tac uh, Jazz's Success Table, and I have all these little elements here, right? Um, I guess maybe because I skipped class when they were doing the periodic table of elements mark so i just made my own little success table you're uh, absolutely and- gold though you're absolutely gold <laughs> <laughs> i love you brother um and one of them is gigo garbage in garbage out right and so be very very careful that if you're allowing only garbage and negativity to come into your life within the environment that you're in don't be surprised don't be surprised if that's what's continuously coming out as well Absolutely. And you know, there's this uh, saying, it's probably so cliche now, you know, they say when you jump, when you're on an airplane, you know, the flight attendant will tell you to don your own mask before helping others. Same thing. You got to wear that, put that auction on your first before you can now start giving abundance to others. Um, Oprah Winfrey talks about this, about filling your cup. So it's overfilling. And then at that point, then you can help others. Right. Um, That's really what's key. Now, some people look at that. That's being selfish. No, but that's being selfless. That's being selfless. I mean, Bill Gates, whether people love him or hate him, he's had to port himself to do what he's doing in his, in his philanthropic uh, uh, pro- uh, projects, right, all over the world. But he had to put into himself first in order to get to that point. Well, I think it's so important that you mention that because how could you go into any type of relationship, and a relationship meaning like uh, uh, an intimate relationship with some type of uh, like a partner, a life partner, um, or even a business relationship. And, and and when I mean a business relationship, it could be like partners like Seamus and I, um, but it could just be like with a, a client as well. That's a relationship. How could you go there to to give when you haven't filled yourself up? yet and so what oprah's talking about filling her own cup how could you love someone if you don't love yourself you know i say it all like i I showcase it all the time every morning at some point either from getting up out of bed to before i leave my house i mean there's a mission in my head that i need to try to kiss my kids like and i'm trying to you know tippy toe and say okay hopefully they wake up so i don't have to wake them up but i just want to give them a kiss but before i do that it's i'm like kissing myself (laughs) to remind myself how much I love myself. And that's not like from an egotistical perspective. It's because, dude, you've been through a lot and you're going to probably go through a lot again today and some other day. And I just want you to know, Jazz, I fucking love you. Yep. You know what I mean? And so now I'm ready to give to everybody around me because I've filled myself up. And so I yep. love that you mentioned and, and, that. And to add to that, even we were talking about investing, like I gave that a saying about investing in myself. I tell people this and let's go to real estate for a second. People say, well, how do I get people to, you know, lend me private money? How do I do this? And it's like, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, how, why should someone invest in you? That's what it comes down to. You're the asset. It's not the property. That's the asset. You are the asset. And if you're not investing in yourself, don't expect anybody to invest in you. So talking about real estate, um, and we're 35, 40 minutes into this thing, and we haven't even touched on real estate, which I want to, but that's just what's going to happen. And, and, and as I mentioned it earlier, I mean, it really is 80% of it's all here. It's all mindset. The other 20%, of, which is the tactics you can learn from a lot of different places. And Mark will have his own take on, on, on how he likes to invest into real estate. I'll have my own take. It doesn't make him right. doesn't make him wrong and vice versa. I mean, it's what works well for you, right? Um, there's people who made millions of dollars selling vending machines, selling real estate, copywriting, whatever it is. They all work. It's just you need to put in the work. But talking specifically about real estate, brother, why don't we go really high level for a second and then we'll, we'll, we'll go into the micro. Um, what's kind of just your thoughts on what the market's doing right now, mid-2021? Um, uh, uh, is there still a place for investors to make money in real estate with all the rhetoric 
uh, uh, and the noise that the media is putting out there in terms of what's going on with real estate values, and some of it is warranted, but not all of it. Um, also, just, just and I'm going to throw some things into the melting pot of this question so you can kind of derive your answer. Um, uh, uh, even with the new stress test, with the new rules of the stress test, um, not many changes other than the stress test right now. Um, uh, we are definitely seeing in certain pockets values have appreciated like we've never seen before, which some of it was is is hard to believe because we're in a pandemic and we don't have people coming in and GTA where I focus, Southern Ontario where you do a lot of your stuff. Um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but there, there, there hasn't been a lot of immigration, but yet we're seeing record highs in appreciation, 18, 19, 20% year over year uh, appreciation. What's just kind of your thoughts on the whole the, the the real estate market as a whole sure. um so first things first i tell anybody that wants to get into real estate investing investor means you're taking on risk i think a lot of people just forget about that oh when you get into real estate i'm an investor and you know it's, it's all going to be kumbaya no you're an investor now so this is now you now this is game on now two is the money is always made on the buy so you need to do your homework you need to make sure you either you're working with a realtor, realtor group brokerage like Jazz's group and making sure as an investor, is there meat on the bone? Because that's your hedge. See, there's this, what they're saying now to really be um, protect yourself in the next coming years. Cash is a liability. Debt is the asset. Real estate's the hedge. But you got to make sure that there's a meat on the bone on that property. If you're buying a property and you're an investor, and you're, and you're saying, okay, I want to buy this property. I want to do the burst strategy, for example. So I need to put some lift into it. And then I'm going to pull some capital out of it. You got to make sure there's already some equity sitting in that property. Because that strategy may not work. That stress test may have had an effect on it. If the market just plateaus. I mean, you know, some of the predictions are saying is 2022, you know, late 2022 is where we're going to start seeing some of the, you know, the patterns. I mean, the patterns are already there that we're seeing in the U.S. No one has a crystal ball. But the biggest mistake one can make is, is not being in the market. And that's what I tell people is get in the market, but you have to educate yourself. It's like don't go buy a penny stock and then you get, you know, get in the right room. So I tell people this is the rule number one for me. Use your money, use your own money to invest in yourself. Use other people's money to invest in real estate. So if I have $20,000 sitting in a line of credit or $25,000 in a line of credit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, I'm going to reach out to people and saying, Hey, who are the best mentors in this? Who has been through these storms before? Who has not, who can, who's charted the course in these types of storms? I'm going to get in a room with them and they're going to teach me how to fish. That's yeah. what I would think. Now, is there certain strategies that that you're seeing right now that um, are working really well, and and, and kind of what's your macro thesis um, on investing in real estate in terms of what strategies that you really like? Sure. So when I first got into real estate investing, uh, a lot of my stuff was based on HGTV <laughs> and YouTube. So I got into the buy and hold, uh, the buy and hold uh, philosophy, which was fine. What I quickly realized is that I'm going to need a lot of properties in order to to keep up with what my income was with when I was employed. Um, I'm no longer employed. So having said that, I needed to fill in that gap. And what I found was that was going to be difficult. So what I did was I paid to get into a room. In that room, I got enlightened between the difference between active income and passive income. So active income being flips, and then you got your buying holds. So now what we do, the way our company works is my business partner, myself is number one is we take pride in, we tell people what our business is essentially helping people make money in real estate. That's all we do. We want to help people make money in real estate. That's it. That's, that's one of our values, help people. So what we did was we started on the active side. So we've gone all the way on the spectrum of getting off market deals. So either keep the best and then sell the rest is one, two, is doing a wholesale, so we buy it off market, put a little lipstick on it, put it in the market. It's about velocity of money, and by taking that velocity of money and by taking those profits, is then reinvesting into the passive side. Okay, and then what we do is 
a good exercise by looking at an off market deal is that if I can't sell an off market deal, like a wholesale, then I'm going to put more money into it. Now I got to flip it. Is there still money there to make? Hang on one second, Mark. I got to cut yeah. you off because you, you, you said a word wholesale. Right. And, and it sounded like wholesale, but that's not what you're talking about. Uh, so wholesale would be off market, getting a deal off market and then wholesaling it could be right. one option. Okay. 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 Then the next angle I'd say is wholesale. So you end what up. What does that mean? What does wholesale mean? Wholesale yeah. means you get an off market deal and you quickly put it on, on MLS. So and is that before you actually even close on it or are you uh, closing on it? I, I close on it and then I'll do it. I won't do it prior to that's, that's breaking some rules. Right. So, okay. uh, and so what I'll do with that in that case, it's, I want to take advantage of the biggest marketing there is in the country, which is the MLS. Right. So there's one option there. Now, if I can't sell it based on its condition or what have you, then I'm going to have to put in more skin in the game and now do a flip. Okay. Well, I tried to do a flip and no one wants it. Now I have to be ready to keep it. Now I keep it. Now, is there enough cash flow coming in? Okay. Uh, okay. So now I got cash flow. Maybe I want to turn this into an Airbnb or maybe I want to sell it and do a VTB. Maybe a new investor wants to come in turn key and now I hold the mortgage for it. So you can see it's this multiple exit strategies along the way that mitigates the risk or hedge along the way. And that's why it's so, so important. I tell people is really understanding the fundamentals of real estate and on what a good deal is from the beginning. So you have multiple options. If you buy a turnkey property that you're looking to uh, buy and hold, you have limited exit strategies. And that's where we can get in trouble if the market starts to, to buckle. Is that helpful? A hundred percent brother. Now you said to, to, to invest the right way, like, uh, like in and around that, that's kind of what you said and making sure that the fundamentals of the deal are right. I want, I want people who are listening right now to actually, you know, after you, you go through some of the fundamentals to come back to it and, and actually write this down. So I kind of want to list one, two, three, three fundamentals. It could be four or five if you need to, like if you want to go that kind of wide, but what are some fundamentals that you have to have in place before like moving forward with the deal? Like how does somebody know that it's a good deal to invest into? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to what I said before. <laughs> Get the right mentor. <laughs> don't listen to your, uh, you know, in our Indian culture, don't listen to your aunties, and uncles, you, <laughs> yeah. you get, get in a room with the right mentors. Invest, invest in a, in an amazing realtor that's investor savvy, that's investing themselves. That's, what's going to be key. We always, there's a, a, you know, another thing is cliche about a power team, get a power team going, get them to help you do the due diligence for you. And the right power team will tell you it's a bad deal. So as you can see, before I even get to a property itself, I've dug the well beforehand, I've dug the well and I've invested in those relationships beforehand. I tell people the biggest mistake a lot of investors make is they'll go in and I, you know, and I had to actually create a, a YouTube show called at pick Mark Smith's brain because I was getting 30 texts a day saying, Hey, I got a deal. Walk me through the deal. It's like, who are you? Like, I think that a lot of people are looking for that transaction versus transformational relationship. Invest in your team and your team will make sure you're protected. So that's the first thing for fundamentals is making sure you have a right team in place and they're going to tell you what the market, the, the, the market's like in a certain area. So for example, someone may say, and I got like, I don't want to come after me on this one, but there's people saying, Oh, look at Timmins. There's so much value there. I'm not going to invest in Timmins because people on my power team says don't invest in Timmins. And these are the reasons why it may fit someone else's strategy. It doesn't fit my strategy. Now, are you currently looking just your current portfolio, brother? Where are you kind of looking and what gets your juices flowing in terms of location? Sure. So we have, um, so I'm going to have a personal portfolio uh, that I started with. Um, and then our business, we have flips. Uh, we're doing new builds. Okay. Uh, and those are concentrated in, in the Ontario market. Uh, we, our business as well as we we have apartments. We're actually closing on an apartment, a 29 unit building apartment, uh, which we're really excited about. And we're going to be adding to that portfolio as well with some amazing, uh, joint venture partners. Um, so that's what we're doing. And, you know, and the funny thing is for a lot of investors that are coming into the game, um, they'll say, 
they want to start with one single family home and then they want to go to a duplex and then maybe a conversion. They, it's like this almost like this train they go across. I said, screw it. <laughs> I'm going to go ask the hottest girl to the prom right now. Let's go right to the apartments. Why not? If the math is the math and the difference is, is that the bank is going to look at the asset itself, the building itself versus looking at me as the asset. As far as the bank's concerned, I'm a bad asset because I'm unemployed. But if I have a 29 unit building that's, that's, that's a print press, they're going to say, Hey, Mark, let's go. How soon can you sign the paperwork? Well, I love that. I mean, I love that about commercial financing, right? Um, the fact that they're going to look at what the numbers of the, of the property you're doing opposed to your personal uh, ability to get financing, my personal ability to get financing. Not that they don't look at us still on commercial financing, but most of the application is weighed on, on the income that, that, that the property's uh, producing. Um, you've given so much fire here in tips and, 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 and certain tactical, you went mindset and tactical. That's why, I mean, this, I'm surprised we didn't do this before and I apologize because it's All my good. fault because I get things mixed up. I, you and I did a video before, but it was live on my nightcap on Instagram, which it all kind of is a blur to me that, as I mentioned, the last 17, 18 months, I don't know what was a podcast and what was not. Then I was on your podcast as well. So it was all a blur. It's why I needed to have you on because you're able to go high level and right into the dirt of, of, of specific strategies. But I still want you, I'm going to ask you because I'm your buddy. I know I can. I want you to leave my viewers and listeners with a takeaway and it can come from really uh, that high level, low level real estate business life, wherever kind of mark you wants to take it. Uh, but please leave my, my, my viewers and listeners with a takeaway today, brother. Yeah. The biggest takeaway I'm going to give all of you is the power of choice. That's it. It's the power of choice. You know, it's like I said before, and I, and it, this is actually comes from a book. It's not like I made this up. This is from a book by Dr. Victor Frankel, Man's Search of Meaning. And this was a gentleman that survived four concentration camps in the Second World War. And the, the premise from this book, or and I'll paraphrase this, is again, it's not the circumstance that defines you. It's how you choose to respond to that circumstance. So my friends, I'll leave you with that. I really appreciate you, buddy. Where can people find you, Mark? Like, you know, you can send them to three different places, 14 different places, one place. I don't know where you like um, uh, 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 to send people. I don't want to steal that thunder away from you. But if you are watching or listening, taking your dog for a walk on the treadmill, make sure when you get back to your home or your office that you just, just, just search him everywhere. Go find him in all his places. And because he's a little different type of content on Instagram than it is on his podcast and his YouTube and his Facebook and his LinkedIn. And so you want to kind of get the full experience of Mark, but where are the, the places that you like most people to go? Sure. To? Uh, the best, honestly, the best place is really Instagram. Like I'm on all the different platforms, um, but Instagram is the best is the best way to get a hold of me. So it's at seven two mindset investor. So the number seven, number two mindset investor at seven two mindset investor, you can, Anything you just go to you just go to Google and just type in seven two mindset investor. It's going to pop you on on any of any of my platforms. And what I like to do is for any listeners, if you're interested, I did I did write a book and the right the book is about the mindset hacks of really marketing yourself uh, for sales and so forth. So if anybody's interested, I'd love to give your audience a free copy. And they just have to hit me up on Instagram, and I'll I'll be more than happy to send you a free copy. You're awesome, buddy. Make sure to DM. Uh, uh, Mark, tell him that you heard him here on the uh, on the podcast. Get that book. I mean, he's kind enough to give it away for free. We really, really appreciate that, brother. Um, and uh, uh, you, you mentioned Instagram. Is that like one of your favorite places personally yourself? Is that kind of like the the, 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 the the platform that you like to go on Instagram content on? Yeah. Just um, you know, I'm not much of a consumer. I'm more of a Got creator. Um, but um, that and in fact, uh, Clubhouse as well. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm really loving Clubhouse. I don't know if you and I have been in a room yet together, but I can't wait to get into your room. I haven't been on Clubhouse for the last seven, eight, nine days um, just because we're in a product, uh, a project launch here at the office. So that turns my life and my team's life upside down for 10, 12 days. Uh, but I'm really loving Clubhouse. I'm liking the uh, the audio aspect to it and, and, and not surprising that two podcast hosts love the app that is Clubhouse. But I, I, I can't wait to catch you on that, Mark. Mark, thank you so much, brother. I can't wait 
So everything opens up. Um, I'm not going to be the guy that's saying to you that you have to go for a beer. But whatever your vice is, water, coffee, uh, vodka. Oh, come on. Bourbon, beer, tequila, God, let's go. Bourbon, te tequila, whatever it is, it's on me. We're going to hook up very, very soon as things start to open up here, phase three, phase four. Um, and then and then you and I can really chop it up again face to face. I hope to every some uh, everyone who's listening, you got one takeaway. The name of this podcast is not for you to necessarily get everything we're talking about because the, we know that the brain can, can only consume so much in one sitting. But hopefully you got that one one nugget that you're finally going to take action on. Remember the sign above my head. It says ready, fire, aim, which means pull the trigger as much as possible and adjust along the way. Mr. Mark Smith, Mr. 72 Mindset Investor, I love everything that you're up to and thank you for your time today. Thank you, my friend.